Uh, chapter three, we talk about supply and demand. And in this chapter, uh, uh, we talked about supply, demand, equilibrium, comparative, supply, demand, and pricing. These were the learning objectives, and uh, we start with market demand. We said demand, uh, the key words on this uh, slide is what? What are the key words? Uh, if you see the key words we've got here, the demand is the quantity of goods that people are ready and willing and able to buy. Okay. So uh, the idea of uh, you know, you're willing and able to buy, so that become a demand. Uh, ready, uh, it means implies that the consumer are prepared to buy a good or service both because they are willing and able. So if you're not willing, you're not part of the demand. And if you're not able to buy, then you're not part of the demand. Okay. And here is an example for demand for pizza. It show you if there are, you know, let's say maybe one family, second family, third family, this is how much they demand. This will be the total demand. So when we talk about demand for potatoes, we're talking about all the people who demand potatoes in the entire economy or market. And you add them up and you get the total demand uh, and that these are the different prices. And we understand why it is uh, going uh, up here and it's going down here because as prices become more expensive, people buy less. And this shows you on a straight line to make it simple, easy numbers. If the price is zero, 700 quantity is demanded. And if the price is seven, maybe no one will buy. But if it's a six, maybe 100 people will buy. And that's the law of demand and it's downward sloping. Uh, the graphical representation is what you see on the chart and this is the algebraic and this is the equation. And this is more like y equals 700 minus 100x. X is P, which is price. So you can use this equation. In your uh, homework, you have one question that says, what's the equilibrium for this supply and for this demand? And they give you these equations. Now, of course, if you have the equations, you make the equation supply equal the equation demand. And once they are equal, you solve for x which is maybe price or quantity, depending on what's missing. Uh, market demand, it changes in price results in the changing of the quantity demanded. Do you understand the idea of quantity demanded? It's how much people actually buy. And uh, we have two types. We have either a movement or a shift. What's the difference between a movement and a shift? We said the movement, you're on the same demand curve. But a shift, when the whole demand curve uh, shifts. So we talked about if there's very high, uh, let's say, uh, if we're talking about everyone loves uh, jirjir, uh, which is some sort of a vegetable, then the whole demand shifts uh, because everyone loves it. But if prices go up or down, then there's just a movement. So this is an example. Uh, increase, it's becoming very uh, popular. More people love uh, uh, potatoes. It becomes popular increase. No one likes potatoes these days, not fashionable decrease. And then here are what are the things? Either taste and preferences. People think jirjir is amazing. Uh, income. People have more money than they buy. Uh, they will shift to the right. Prices of related goods. If another uh, complementary uh, product become very cheap, then maybe now people will demand this complementary. If the other one is a substitute, and the other one become very cheap, then people stop buying. And then we've got future expectations. In the future, we think it will be very expensive. Maybe we buy now. Uh, and the number of buyers. If we've got a lot of people coming from Ta'is to Sana'a, we've got more demand because we've got more people in. That's the other side, which is demand, and we're talking about consumers. Now we're talking about suppliers. And what we mean by suppliers, we're talking about people who are actually produce. And the producers, we're talking about people who are willing and able to produce at different prices. So we have the same thing, movement and shift. You move if there's a change in price only. And you shift for those reasons. What are the reasons uh, that we have? Cost and technology. Let's say, for example, if I produce tomatoes. Now we've got this new technology that will make uh, growing tomatoes easy. I can supply more for the same price. Prices of other goods uh, that is uh, offered uh, for, for the seller. Let's say, for example, I can buy diesel expensive. So now it becomes very expensive for me to produce. Then I will produce maybe less. Future expectations. We think in the future 
uh, it will be very rainy, dusty uh, season, then maybe I'm going to start from now to prepare for that. Number of sellers. If a lot of people start to come to this market, uh, we may have shifted to the right more uh, supply or shifted to the left and people leave. And also the weather condition. Let's say now it's a very good rainy season, uh, makes uh, a lot of potatoes to grow fast and easy, then maybe this is going to shift supply to be higher supply. Equilibrium price and quantity is when supply and demand. When producers meet consumers, when production meets consumption, when supply meets demand is the equilibrium price and quantity. You have an idea of a shortage and a surplus. A shortage happens if we actually produce less than how much we need. Everyone go and want potatoes, but there's not enough potatoes. We have a shortage. Surplus is everyone produce potatoes and people don't want to buy potatoes. We've got a lot of potatoes in the market. That becomes a surplus. So a surplus happens if the price is higher than the equilibrium. Shortage happens if the price is lower than the equilibrium. And uh, many times they will go to the equilibrium unless there is government regulations. And we have looked at two examples. Surplus in the case of a uh, price, uh, minimum wage, that's when they put it above the equilibrium and then we start to have a lot of people looking for jobs. And shortage in case of uh, the government set this is the maximum price you can charge for renting homes and then this will be the maximum price and therefore it's a lower than the equilibrium we start to have a shortage. Uh, comparative statistic is the idea of looking at the what if, what happens if there is a surplus, if there's a minimum wage, if there is a maximum price, if more uh, condition, if people prefer Jirjir, if. So all of these F takes us into comparative statistics. So we start to look at these in economic models. Number one, we need to assume everything is the same, right? We need to assume all factors except one thing is changing because we can't do a lot of ifs at the same time. We want to look at the buyer demand, the seller demand, you know, represented by their lines and they are shown. So we need to assume they're available. We need to begin the analysis from where is the equilibrium now and then move from that equilibrium. And we also need to start to assuming what's going to show up next. What will be the most, uh, you know, consequence of such thing. And then you start to think, for example, here, what is going to happen if we think pizza is very healthy? What's going to happen? Will people produce more pizza or people will buy? So we're buy. We're talking about buyers. We're talking about demand. Demand more people they want, so it will shift to the right. They don't, shift to the left. Same thing for suppliers. Uh, in case of suppliers, you will look at the same thing. And then you see, if the shift happens, you see where's the equilibrium, where is it going to be now? And then you start to compare what was and what is now, and then you start to build the analysis. And then we move to the idea of short run and a long run. In the short run, we're talking about the immediate effect. Everyone loves Jirjir, tomorrow Jirjir is expensive. That's short run. We call this uh, the rashing function of price. Basically changing in the market price to eliminate any imbalance. Immediately price reflects. And this is an example here. On the other hand, uh, we've got it where it is uh, you can see we've got those cases, either demand up, demand down, supply right, supply left, or supply down, supply up. And then the long run. And the long run is basically the two steps. You take what is the short and then what's going to happen on the long run. It takes two steps. In this example here, first demand go down and then supply go up. In this example, supply go right and then demand go up. In this example... In this chart here on this slide, we can see all the cases. Higher demand, supply increase. Decrease in demand, supply decrease. Increase in supply, demand decrease. Decrease in supply, decrease uh, in demand. So here you need to think about it on the two step, okay? We looked at the supply in the, in the previous discussion. Everyone, uh, very good condition to grow uh, potatoes. So we're talking about supply, which is the two examples here. Very good condition, demand increase. Va not bad, uh, very bad condition, demand will decrease. And then we look at the demand. 
If everyone loves Jirjir, we're going to supply more Jirjir. No one loves Jirjir, people will stop producing Jirjir. Makes sense? So here we look at the entire case, how they get together, supply and demand, and how they affect it. We've got some world examples, oil, computers, and that's the end of the chapter.